take a minute and describe my setup and my process here. I made a stabilizer which has been working very well and I wouldn't be able to do a long turning like this without it. And it was very simple to build and it just clamps onto my workbench here which is secure enough. The workbench is fairly heavy and I hit it with a hammer to fine tune it so every once in a while I'll just give it a tap to just about contact the uh, surface there. So I've been able to get a lot more done with the stabilizer. I can use more force applying with uh, the chisels. Here are my chisels over here and my custom made scrapers actually didn't work as well as I anticipated. I was hoping for a cutting tool that could just chew right into the wood and make that shape, but it didn't quite work like that. And this part of the curve here and here on the far left and right didn't actually engage the wood at the right angle, it just didn't cut very well, so. But this part here in the front uh, was effective at setting the depth that this arc needs to be. And once I got to that point, then this part of the scraper can smooth out that ball shape. So, I was able to use it more like a gauge and a, a spacer to get the dimensions of that curve just right but the part that needs to be removed here and here has to be done with this tool here so I'm I have to go in like this at an angle to remove that part of the curve that this chisel can't do but it's still very uh, useful uh, just as a gauge to, to get that shape just right. And it's the same thing with the smaller chisel. Really it's just the space in between these two inside corners that's the critical dimension. And then the depth front to back is the other dimension. So, you know, this sets the depth efficiently and I'm just really using these front cutters to remove most of the material with this chisel. Um, but it doesn't really cut that aggressively. It'll just smooth out the final shape. But still very useful. This scraper here I had to sharpen three different times uh, because it, it doesn't work very well and I'm removing quite a bit of material with it. 
So it's still a pretty slow and tedious process to go from the rough shape to the finished shape. But what's very efficient about this turning process is I haven't once needed to use my calipers. And in order to use these, you have to shut the machine off and, and check it and, you know, do it by trial and error. So I, I never once had to turn the machine off to, you know, check and see if something is the right size. Because the size is determined by the diameter of the spindle, which is cut on my router jig. So that's all pretty consistent. And the size of the curves are determined by the chisels, and that sets the shape of everything else. Even though, you know, everything is done by scraping, which is, you know, pretty slow and tedious, but, you know, it's, I'm able to control, you know, the cuts, and it's been working out pretty good. So far, to get to this point, it takes me about an hour and a half. So, this is going to be at least two hours just to make this one part. Very tedious work. But it's all turning out pretty good. These are my router jigs for my lathe. The dust collection has been working really good, both on my jigs that I built and this 4-inch hose that I have rigged up on my workbench. I have it strapped to this board here and I just kind of wedged this in here in between that clamp and this contraption over here. But by wedging this short plank in here with the hose strap to it, I can position it from here to over there without having to uh, reclamp anything. But I haven't had to wear a dust mask because having the hose right there, it doesn't get all the heavy chips, as you can see, but it takes out all the fine dust. So I'm breathing in fresh air as I'm working. To keep my chisels sharp, I actually haven't sharpened my beading chisels. I just honed the flat side of it a couple times. Um, but this chisel I have to sharpen, you know, pretty much every 10 minutes. I can maybe make um, two or three beads and then I have to resharpen it. Um, but it just takes a few swipes on my honing stone and I have 600 grit right here and this is the grit that I'm using to do most of the work and then I'll do a, a finished swipe with a thousand grit. So if I need to rough out the chisel I, I do 220 and 320 grit but 600 grit is the one that does most of the work once the chisel is already sharp. So that's my lathe set up. Don't get to use this tool very much.